Okay, the next thing we want to do is set up a DHCP server. And we want to do that so our host can get dynamic IP addresses. So we're going to go to Control Panel. And I'm going to go to, in this case, Programs and Features. And we're going to turn Windows Features on or off. And notice my current roles here. And this is just one of the new features, or sort of the new look of 2008. Um, diagnostics, let me just open some of these here. Configuration. And their storage management. That's kind of a neat little, you know, toolkit here, or an overview of your server. Um, I can connect to disk management services. Um, loading, all right. I can manage, you know, my firewall and security settings. Um, diagnostics, I can look at event viewer, security logs, group policy management. Um, you know, all kinds of nice tools here. These are my current roles, are the current roles of you know, of the, my of my server. I'm a domain controller. I'm a DNS server. Um, what I want to do is add the role of DHCP, and I'm just going to right-click on roles. I want to go next. I want to go ahead and select a DHCP server, and here we'll go through, and the wizard will actually let you walk through and configure settings. This is kind of an interesting change with 2008. It's a bit more intuitive than the previous method. Remember, you click on Add Remove Programs, you'd add to the HTTP server, and then you'd go and configure your scope and options and things like that. Notice our parent domain is pirates.arg, preferred DNS server IP version 4 address. Um, we're not going to use WINS. Uh, you can use WINS. You can integrate it with DNS, but we won't. Um, we would configure our scope here. So scope name, 192. 168, 80, our static IP is 100, so let's say, and remember we have a gateway and a DNS and router and gateway address of 1 and 2, so let's start at 3 here. And remember that the static IP of our server is 100, so we'll end at 99, 192.168.80.99. Alternatively, we could configure an exclusion. 0 and our gateway is 192.168.80.2 activate scope notice it's the default six days um, interesting that you know you can choose there's different default options for wireless and for wired um, you know wireless is you know a, a lot less secure than wired and so the lease ex expires sooner in this case we'll go ahead and activate our scope um, we're not going to deal with DHCP version 6. Um, that's up and coming, but chances are in a lot of networks you'll still find just IP version 4. This, These are the credentials of who has permission to authorize a DHCP server. In this case, we have enterprise admin privileges and the pirates domain tree and the arg forest. Um, authorization is a very wonderful thing about Microsoft DHCP because it prevents somebody from coming in onto your network and just setting up a rogue DHCP server. They could boot up a you know an unauthorized server and hand out bad IP addresses, um, you know do man in the middle attacks, address spoofing, max spoofing, host spoofing, all all kinds of things, um, and all kinds of exploits against your network just by running a rogue DHCP server. But by making you know by forcing DHCP servers to be authorized, you can cut down on that security risk. We'll click next. We'll go ahead and click on install. <coughs> Remember that DHCP is it's a a, a four-way handshake process. Um, the host or client boots up initially with a very limited version of the TCP IP stack and does what's called a DHCP discover broadcast. Then the DHCP server will hear it if it's on the same subnet. Now remember, DHCP discover broadcasts are not routable unless your router is 1542 compliant, or RFC compliant, um, or unless you have a DHCP relay agent on that subnet that can, you know, has the static IP address of a, a DHCP server on another subnet and it can relay it. So you would need a DHCP server on the same subnet, but anyway, DHCP discover, the client initiates, the server responds with DHCP offer, the client responds with DHCP server uh, request, and then following the DHCP server would respond with a DHCP acknowledgement or ACK. Um, just sort of an, an interesting little handshake process when you're doing DHCP. Um, it's almost done here, it's moving. Ah. <sighs> 
I wet my whistle, drink some tea there. Okay. <clears throat> and here's our DHCP server. And what we want to do is we're going to look at the other way of configuring DHCP as well. Now that we've added the DHCP server role, if we want to go into administrative tools, there's a shortcut and we're just going to go ahead and put that on our desktop. DHCP and DNS are, you know, along with that the directory users and computers, sites and services and domains and trusts, uh, uh, you know, is a very commonly used tool. Here's sarah.pirates.arg, my IP version for settings, and we'll just look at some of the options here. If I were to click on properties, this gives me the start IP and the ending IP. The least duration, I can increase it, decrease it by days, hours, minutes. Um, DNS configuration. Whether or not, you know, well, what I'm doing with dynamic update, I can enable DNS dynamic updates according to the settings below, or I cannot disable it. Um, automatic, remember that's, you know, when a host can automatically add its A records. If the host is not capable of doing that, then I can say dynamically update DNS A and records for DHCP clients that do not request updates, and my DHCP server would stand in the gap and do that for them. Um, here's my address pool, 3 in this case, to 254. Now the problem with that is we would need an exclusion because our, in this case our server's IP address is 100. So we'll pull that out and we'll look at an, another way of adding addresses. Um, I have no address leases. I have no MAC reservations. If I were to do a MAC reservation, um, then it's only going to assign that specific IP address to that machine uh, with that MAC address. So you should always use static IPs for your servers, but if you didn't, then you would at least want to set up a, you know, a reservation for all of your servers to make sure that they always receive the same IP address. Um, scope options, again, some of the more common ones, the router option, which is the gateway, and DNS server option, but we can add those, pull it on from this pull down list here. So you can configure all kinds of options on your DHCP server. And there are server options as well. Scope options uh, for just a scope, server options for an entire server. Um, we're going to deactivate the scope. Remember, a scope has to be activated, and also the server has to be authorized. In this case, we are authorized. And, um, you know, the green arrow here, the scope was activated. If I were to activate the scope, let me go ahead and activate it. No red arrow, let me deactivate it. There's the red arrow. So I'm going to delete the scope here, and we'll look at another way. And now we're going to add a scope and do the same thing. But this time, um, we're going to add an exclusion. And 192.168.83.192.168.80.254, bear last valid IP address. For the exclusion, 192.168, Really only have one, and that's 100, 80, 100. And our least duration here, we can default to eight days if we want. Do I want to configure, um, let's go ahead and set additional options. I want to set the gateway, 192, 168, 82. Now for the DNS servers, um, we can just type in a name. If I want to resolve Sarah, or I could type in the IP address here, but I want to add Sarah. And Sarah will take care of DNS forwarding to other DNS servers. One server not using it. Um, yes, let's go ahead and activate the scope now, and we'll finish. Now there's our scope. <coughs> our scope's active, and here are a range of valid addresses. Minus our exclusion of 192.168.80.100. So nobody's leased now.